Okay, so let's take uh, an for example. Um, you're, we're interested uh, in fasting blood sugar, and we know that fasting blood sugar has a normal distribution with a mu, let's say, of um, 85 and a sigma of 11. Okay, and we want to know what is the probability if I were to take a sample of, uh, let's say, n is equal to. Uh, 36 then the average is going to be uh, less than or equal to let's say uh, 88 okay now the way it is set up here I can actually find the answer by changing uh, into the Z which is going to be equal to X bar minus a mu over Sigma divided by square root of n yani I take the 88 and I minus the 85 and then I'm going to divide by Sigma which I have in this case so far so it's 11 and I'm gonna divide by square root of 36 which is 6 and I can find the answer to my question okay now here's the thing what if uh, the question did not provide me sigma, so I did not know sigma. Sigma was not provided. Sigma was unknown. So sigma is unknown. But on the other hand, the sample came with not only the x bar, but it came also with an s that was provided for us, and we were told that s happened to be equal to 12. So what is this s? This is the sample standard deviation, which serve as an estimate of sigma and we still ask the same question so now I cannot calculate uh, Z any longer because Z is requires Sigma I do not have Sigma I have to replace Sigma by s and I'm gonna do that therefore I'm going to put s right here and that becomes a t distribution and I'm gonna plug in here 12 Okay, uh, remember this is 6, it's not sigma. Okay, all right, so 88 minus 85, that's 3, and you have 12 divided by 6, that's 2, so the answer is t1.5, meaning that we are calculating the probability of t, and you have to remember what's the degrees of freedom. Remember the degrees of freedom of t is n minus 1 so far you had 36 observation minus 1 that's 35 so we write 35 thick small where t and it was less than remember so it's less than or equal we calculate it to be equal 1.5 okay and that is the probability we're looking for and instead of using the Z table, we're going to have to use the T table, okay? We're going to have to, but before I go to the T table, let's think about a little bit the answer I'm going to get. Well, I know that the T has a normal distribution. I know the T is centered at zero. So 1.5 is somewhere here. And the question is T less than 1.5 so the the area I'm looking for is this area here so I know my 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 answer to that probability ought to be greater than 50 percent so how am I gonna find that well I'm gonna have to use the t table but here's the problem with the t table and remember the z when we're dealing with the z they gave us about 800 areas and we discussed how to find these areas and that was possible because the Z was one single distribution. That is not the case with the T. The T changes. Therefore, we call it, it's a family of distribution. It's now one single. So every time your degrees of freedom changes, your T changes, and then the, sh the areas, the probabilities associated with the T changes. So if you think about it, if the statistician are going to give you the 800 areas, for every T, that's going to end up with tons and tons of pages. Therefore, the statistician decided not to do that. They decided to cut, uh, to do shortcuts. Okay, so what are the shortcuts? The first shortcut 
that statistician decided to do is that uh, regarding the degrees of freedom. So uh, let me open the T so that you can see it. That is that. Sorry. You're gonna have shortcuts. Okay. So he, this is the T. If you can see it. Okay. And um, right on the first column you have the degrees of freedom. Now notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you have 6, 7 all the way to 10, 11 all the way to, these are the degrees of freedom. So 16 all the way up to 20, 21 all the way up to 25, all the way up to 30. So far you're getting every degrees of freedom. Now here's where the shortcuts are gonna start. From 30, you're not gonna get 31, 32, 33. You're just gonna jump to 35, 40, 45, 50, and 60. So if you're doing a calculation where your degrees of freedom is 32, you're not going to find degrees of freedom 32. What do you do? Well, you take the closest one. You either go to degrees of freedom 30 or 35. So continue with the degrees of freedom. You have uh, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 140, 200, and then you have infinity. Now, remember what I told you about sample size? As sample size increases, the degrees of freedom increases, the sigma of the t starts to look more and more, approaches 1, and therefore the t starts to look much like the z. So what I want you to do on your table, on your t table, is crash the infinity and replace it with the z. What you have down here is actually the z. Okay, so uh, the first variable that uh, the statistician decided to um, to save on, on, on paper are the degrees of freedom. They're going to give you degrees of freedom from 1 all the way to 35 one by one, and then you're not going to get every degrees of freedom. That's number one. The number, the number two is that the setup of the table is actually the reverse of the Z. So instead of having inside the table the areas, and on the top row you have, and first column you have the Z, what you have is on the top row where you have the area here, these are the areas, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.975, 99, etc. These are the probabilities. These are the areas. And as you can see, you do not have 800 areas. You only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 areas. So that's another shortcut. They're not providing you with 800 areas. They're only providing you with 9 areas. And if you look at the first area, it started at 60%, yani 0 0.6. They did not give you the 0 0.5, they did not give you the 0 0.4, they did not give you the 0 0.3, they just gave you 60, 70, 80. I'm going to explain that in a minute, but uh, let me just finish explaining the table. And what you have inside are the actual T values, okay? So, um, so for example, if your degrees of freedom is 10 and your T is less than or equal to 1.815, do you see it? 1.8125 the probability or the area below 1.8125, you go up is 95%, okay? So, let's see if I can, uh, nope, I'm just going to have to open a new one. So, that means that if you can imagine that this is a t-table, a particular t-table, with any degrees of freedom, it doesn't matter because they all are centered at zero. What they did is they came to the area 60%. So let's say from blue line all the way down is 60%. Okay. They looked, what is this value right here? So what is T equal to what value? Okay. And that is the value that you're going to find in your table. And then they moved T up a little bit till 0 0.7, so now your area is 0 0.7, and they found t again. Now, obviously, the value of t 
changes according to the degrees of freedom and so on and so forth now they did not have to start at the 50 percent because obviously t when sorry uh, when t is less than zero the probability of t less than zero is always 50 percent doesn't matter what the what the degrees of freedom is right if you if you take zero and you go down well the area you're covering is always going to be equal to 50 percent hence they decided that there was no need for them to give you 50 percent because you can guess what the answer to that is going to be